Y'all, the first red flag is that this beautiful home is only $800 a month for rent. No way. This lady was so smart. She said, let me Google the man that want to rent this property to me and discovered that they're using a dead man's identity. Oh my gosh. These scammers, they are so low. They will stop at nothing. Okay. They will steal your mama draws. They do not care. So his family, and may he rest in peace, was not even aware that the property that they're selling was being used in a rental scam. And she saw this on, you know, the Facebook marketplace. But really, you have to beware of any place that you're looking for places to rent or even to buy. A bargain. The price they were asking was a bargain. A 1,500 square foot house for just over $800 a month? I am interested. In that was quite a bargain. So once she saw the ad for it on Facebook Marketplace. Hope to hear back from you soon. Thanks. Andy Weicker jumped on it. The owner claimed that he had accepted a contracting job in Phoenix, Arizona. But when Andy asked to see the inside of the home, the response from the supposed homeowner struck her as odd. The only way you can view it is if you send us the money and then we would send you the keys to the house along with the sales contract, not sales contract, a rental contract. Yeah. Andy was starting to lose her patience with this process, so she Googled the name of the man claiming to be renting the house. I was shocked because my first four or five hits on the computer were obituaries of a local gentleman with the same name. His name was Jeffrey L. Besor of Shippensburg, who passed away earlier this year. And he did own the property that was being advertised for rent. That property is currently listed for sale. When I read this gentleman's obituary, I, it was glaring to me that his date of birth was listed in the obituary as well as his actual date of death. Combining the man's date of death and a search for his address may have allowed a scammer to realize that they would not get much pushback for using the home as bait in a rental scam like this. News Aid contacted Jeffrey Besor's family, and they did not even know the home was being advertised for rent. We also checked with state regulators and the Pennsylvania Funeral Directors Association. There are no guidelines to listing dates of birth and death in obituaries, which are often written by family members. I think this should be a loud warning to not only the funeral directors, but the family members as well. Again, there are no laws or regulations on what you can or cannot put in an obituary. But common sense would dictate the more information a family reveals in an obituary, the more helpful that is for a scammer. Even after death, someone's personal information could be used to commit identity theft. I'm Brian Roach on